Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to talk about handling the blitz. Uh, but before we get started, just want to talk a little bit about just how glad I am the recruiting season's over. Uh, I don't know if recruiting season's tougher on the recruiting coach, the high school coaches, or the players. I know we had one, I have a high school coach I felt bad for, the kid that I was recruiting in a, about 15 other schools were recruiting. The kid committed 15 visits to 15, he's gonna go to, he told 15 schools he's gonna visit them, so you can just uh, imagine how that was for that head coach to try to tell those other 10 schools that the kids isn't coming. And then he, uh, on the five official visits he went to, including us, he said he was going to that school. So, you know, everybody, every one of us thought we were, the kid was coming to school and at our place, and of course he only went to one, and then that coach had to listen to five other crazy college recruiters who thought they had the kid uh, going. So it's, it's a tough time of the year. I remember when I was being recruited out of high school, not all that long ago, but it, I went to Boca Raton High School in, in South Florida, and I was being recruited by Lou Saban. If you remember Lou Saban, he was at University of Miami at the time. And they always have those, uh, Right before the signing date in the newspaper, they got everybody's oral oral commitments, you know, the verbal commitments that aren't binding, but you, you read that stuff in the paper, and of course, you know, the whole time I'm being recruited, you know, I'm the guy, you know, there's, you know you're the guy, you're going to bring the Miami out of the depths of the program and all that kind of stuff, you're the, you're the quarterback of the future and all that, so, you know, of course I believed him, and, uh, but then after I read that newspaper, I saw a couple of names, I saw a guy named Mike Rodrique. And I got Coach Saban on the phone. I says, Coach, what's the deal with this Mike Rodrique? It says, you know, Choctaw High, Choctahatchee High School in North Florida, quarterback, you know, slash DB. I said, you never told me about him. What's going on with him? And he says, uh, he said, well, he's slash DB. You saw the DB. He's going to be a free safety. Well, as it turned out, he started his freshman year ahead of, ahead of, uh, you know, in our in our freshman class. He ended up playing first. Then the next guy says, well, what about this Jim Kelly? from East Brady, Pennsylvania. I go, I go, what about him? I don't see any slash anything next to the QB next to his name. I go, what's the deal with that? And, and uh, he, he comes back with this. He says, uh, he goes, well, Mark, somebody's got to back you up. I said, yeah, you're right, coach. <laughs> so you got to, I guess recruiting is like these uh, talks. You got to take everything with a grain of salt and uh, make sure that uh, what you're hear, hearing is the truth. But I, I can assure you, I'm going to try to tell you everything I know, which isn't a whole lot, but we'll, uh, at any time in here, you can stop me and uh, ask any questions. It's a small enough group where if anybody wants to just stop and slow it down, we can do that. But uh, th the topic today is handling the blitzes. And uh, when I played at Miami, handling the blitzes was really as simple as go to the line of scrimmage. If you see, if you've got a, uh, a pass or a run that didn't look very good, against the defense they were showing you, we would just simply audible to a three-step passing game, or there were times when we would audible to a maximum protection, you know, maybe an eight-man protection, try to block the blitz completely and throw the ball down the field. So we'd either, you know, get into a three-step drop where we'd turn, you know, we'd kind of field goal protect like everybody does, and they'll turn the wide men free and cut the ball loose uh, on the three-step, or we'd try to block them all, let a receiver get further down the field, and try to hit a touchdown with it. And that's just, and that might be all the more that you need in your package. Get, have the ability to teach your quarterback, if we have this certain run on and they line up in this certain defense, we need to get out of it. And because they're packing everybody in here in the running area, you probably got some single coverage outside. You might want to just drop back three steps and hit a stop or a, or a quick out or a quick slant or something like that. That might be all you need. Or you might want to if you're in some kind of a pro set with a tight end and two backs, you might want to max it up, block, try to block their eight blitzers, and go ahead and throw the ball down the field. And, uh, and really, that's all there was to it. When I was at uh, the University of Miami, we, would just, we had the ability to get out of bad situations anytime we wanted to in that way. But um, for us, as the, as the defenses got a little bit more uh, deceptive in what they were trying to show you, you know, when we come to the line of scrimmage now, they can show you a certain blitz and you, and you audible to your three-step game and then they back out of it and roll up into some kind of hard corner look or take their flat players and buzz them in the flat and play a, play a, zone, on you, a zone on you. All of a sudden, you're throwing something that you really don't want to throw uh, into that, route, into that uh, defense. They show you one thing, you audible out of it, and then they, go, then they disguise, get back into a zone, and you don't have what you want. 
They can do the same thing with the, uh, when you max it up, you end up blocking eight guys and get a two-man route. Well, that's great if you got man coverage and, and your receivers are as good or better than, than, the, than the defenders. But if they bluff you and you start audible and then you start throwing into double coverage and all that kind of thing, and that's really not what you want. So what, we, what people start to do now is work some kind of a sight adjustment, some kind of sight reads off of the things you do. I think you still need to be able to, you'll play some teams where they'll line up in a blitz and they'll show the blitz and you got a chance to hit a touchdown. I remember the, year, the one year I was at East Carolina. I had one kid that was a home run hitter, in my opinion, a guy that could score a touchdown against the University of Miami, who we played that year, the University of Pittsburgh, who we played that year, uh, the University of Syracuse, who we played that year. His name was Walter Wilson. He was about the only guy that could really sting him. And, and when I was at East Carolina, we were, we were praying for the Blitz because what the Blitz did to us is it reduced their, their, their defensive personnel again in the big games. They were better than we were. But when they decided to Blitz and all-out Blitz against us, what did they do? They had a one-on-one -on -one with Walter Wilson in one of their corners. You know, so we loved it. You know, and, and our biggest answer in, the, in those times, you know, was the quick game to Walter, but we also tried to max everything up and uh, allow Walter a chance to work one-on-one -on -one and lay the ball out there and get a couple big plays, you know. Then finally, and we hit big plays against those teams, and they finally figured out if we just play zone, that, you know, we're just physically better than these guys. You know, we're not going to reduce our team to a one-on-one. -on -one. And a lot of people are afraid of the blitz, but we, we welcomed it because he was the he was the only guy that could really beat one of those clubs, you know. So, um, you know, I still think you need to be able to audible to the three-step game or audible to a, some type of a maximum protection. Uh, if you see a team that lines up in a look and they're not going to bluff you and, and you know you can go ahead and get into a situation to either get your one-on-one -on -one with a quick game or go ahead and throw it down the field. Now, but you also, I think, you have to have the ability to call a certain route and run the route unless they blitz. If they blitz, then you've got to know, you know, who's free in your protection. And the quarterback's got to know that. And I'll go over this a little bit more, but the, the whole deal is this. If you're going to run, uh, if you're going to try to release seven men, I mean, if you're going to try to release five men and uh, release three receivers and have your backs check and then release, you know, if they bring certain blitzes, your backs can block before they go, or you might even have your tight end checking before he releases. But if they, if they don't play, if they, don't, if they bring just a four-man rush, you want to release as many as you can and be able to throw the ball down the field. So you want to be able to call a play that's good against the zone, but if they blitz you, your backs can stay in and block, and you might be able to throw some type of side adjustment to your receivers, and we'll get into a little bit of all that. But what I thought I'd do is just start out with uh, different ways of protecting um, the first one I talked about is an eight-man protection. Okay, at Miami and at Florida State, if, if you line up in some kind of pro set, now we'll, sh we'll line up in the shotgun now, and I'll talk about shotgun later on tonight at the 845 session. But if you line up in the shotgun or however you line up, but if you got a tight end and two backs, you got a, you got a chance to block eight of their blitzers, and that's about all they're going to be able to bring on any given look. We'll just look at a, just a classic eight-man front look. Okay, now, if they line up in that look, whether you're in the I formation or however you want to line up, and they bring, they bring these eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys that could block them. Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can block it in a man protection scheme. Some guys like man protection schemes because they want to say, when you, when you get into gap protection schemes or zone protection schemes, sometimes there's a little bit of a doubt as to who has who. And if you want more accountability, uh, in your schemes, then a man protection scheme is not bad. Another thing that a man protection scheme does, not only do you have accountability, but you also have um, the ability to release, uh, release versus zone coverage, let's say. 
You know, those blockers can release if, those guys, if, the, if the defenders don't blitz. So in a man scheme, like in this particular scheme, we know if we've got eight to block their eight, well, it's pretty easy math to just divide everything up. They got four over here and four over there. We got one, two, three, four over here, and, and we got one, two, three, four over here. So if they bring four from either side, we can go ahead and block it. And how we go about doing it is we'll have our center will always work to the weak side. If he's uncovered, he's always going to work to the weak side. And he's going to always work a little tandem to the Mike linebacker right there. Our tackle is going to have his on, not their outside rule, so we'll consider him on or outside. That's still his man. That back's going to have his uh, fourth man there. He's got an on rule. He's got an on, not their outside rule. That's the tackle's rule there. And then the back, because the tack, because the uh, tackle's uncovered, he's fanning out, then that tight end knows that he's going to fan out and block that guy, and then the back will block this eagle look just like that. So, but he's checking. Yeah, he's checking, releasing. He's checking, releasing. And he's checking and releasing. Now, at East Carolina, that's how we protected in our eight-man protection. At Florida State, we gap, we gap protected. And I'll show another couple defenses as we go here. But in this man scheme, if they drop off and just play a three deep zone, let's say our play, one of our favorite plays is, uh, this is our 60, actually it's our gold protection, but if we called uh, gold dip, that was our protection at East Carolina. We called it gold. And dip was the route. Dip was the double in with the backside post. He'd check, work his way here, and this back was out in the flat right now. So versus zone, we had a great play. If this Sam walled off the inside man, then we had a strong safety who's trying to play two. He's got to play him who's in the curl area, and he got a guy out in the flat. They got a guy trying to play two. They're in trouble versus zone, so we, we like that play. But if they bring an all-out blitz at us in our eight-man protection, we can stick ahead on every blitzer. Again, if he comes, we got him. He's there. If these guys come, if that man comes, we're there. If he comes, the back has him. If strong safety come. The tight end, as he's outside releasing, he sees him coming. He can stick a hat on it. So what does that do for us? Without having to, without having to uh, audible to anything, we got a protection scheme set up versus this eight-man front where, is if, where if they blitz, we can stick a hat on it and go where? We'll probably throw right here. If they're bringing all that blitz and that free safety, he's going to have to be in a position to cover this guy right here. They can't just blitz everybody and let you throw hot out in the flat to the tight end or something like that without a safety being in position to cover him. So they're bringing that many people, then there's going to be no free safety help. So that just we're going to hat up the blitz. We'll let them know that we can have the blitz and throw the post on the back side. All right? If you want to see it against a different look. This is still eight man protection, this is still man protection. Say so you get a 50 look. Okay, you still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are the perimeter that we've got to be accountable for. All right, now. Again, he's tackle's got his on rule. Guard's got on, not there, over. On, not there, over. And then he'll help if this over is him. And if he's not there, then he just, he just helps the center right there. So basically, again, those two are working this down lineman to here. They, they basically got a two-man tandem right there. That's still his man. All right, he's got the same deal on, not there, over, and then working inside so it's a solid protection. He's got an on rule. Since he's, on, he's, since he's not uncovered, he's not fan, he's covered, so he's got an on rule, he's got an on rule, and now that bumps the back right there. So the back just knows if the guard's covered, he ends up on the Sam. If the guard's uncovered, he's got his over rule, and that bumps him out to the strong safety. Now that gets a little bit complicated and you might not want to mess with all that kind of stuff right there. But you can, but in this protection, you can stick a hat on any of the eight blitzers that come. But now in this look, 
more than likely you're gonna get this blitz here and the disadvantage of this thing is you'll probably lose your tight end all the way there now where if you if you called the gold protection with your dip route and even if they even though it's a four-man rush here you get him out and him out and him out and him out but you end up losing him which you'd rather not you'd rather not do in that case so if you're just gonna go in the huddle and call a, de uh, a, a defense I mean a call a protection scheme you, t you stand a chance of losing your tight end in this scheme okay now, if you know you're playing an eight-man front team and the guard's always going to be covered and you're always going to fan, that might not be a bad way to go. What we'd rather do... Sure. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Again, we've got... The, the only thing that changes over here is when the guard is covered, he's got an on rule, makes the tackle uncovered, they end up fanning. The tight end fans here, and the back is on the Sam, which is what's happening here. Fan, the back is on the, on the backer. But when, he's, when the guard's uncovered, then he's just in a solid, 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 and that bumps him to that man right there. And that's how we block that scheme there. You can get double eagle. You can put any look up you want, and we can stick a hat on every one of them. Now another eight-man scheme that I like, that we, we run more of a uh, gap protection at Florida State or a zone or whatever you want to call it. You may have your same look. One of the best plays we've had for years, and we use the same thoughts at East Carolina University, only, but we man protected at East Carolina University. We just we felt like, or our offensive line and backfield coaches, they wanted more accountability to say who had who. They didn't want to have everybody just blocking a gap. Gap rules are very simple. The rule is simple. You're just turning back, basically. But, you know, sometimes you get in a gray area about, you know, how far do you go? You go over step too far, you miss some, some guy comes clean in a gap. But most defenses, when they're disciplined, you know, some defenses you see, they've got guys running all over the place. They don't have gap control. But most everybody in our league gives us good gap control. If they wanted to bring four strong or four weak or bring them all for that matter, University of Florida, we call it Gator Blitz. They love to bring them all. They'll bring a guy in that gap, in that gap, in that gap, there. Bring a guy in that gap, there, there, and outside there. They got a man in every single gap. And they're disciplined about doing it because if they're not, you may gash them in the running game. So they've got to have good gap control, and that's exactly how they'll hit it. So what we would do is whether we would audible to this or if you get into it, this is one of the better plays we have. If you get into the red zone or any kind of a, you think a team's going to blitz on a certain down and distance, this is the type of play we would call and we still call. We'd run uh, some kind of a corner route here maybe, some kind of a two-man route on the weak side. He would check. But then he'd run out in the flat. So you got your pretty good little high, high low there in a, versus a zone. And then we usually our fastest man is right here. And he'd work himself running the post right here. Now, what everybody did here is he had the first man outside. That was his uh, C gap. He had the B gap. He had the A gap. He had the strong A gap, strong B, strong C. And we'd usually lock him up on a six technique because sometimes he'd overshoot, he'd overshoot the six and here comes the Ed and the strong safety. So a lot of times we'd just say, don't, don't shoot so hard because this, you know, if, this, if we get this, we're going to get that. But don't cut across them so fast that you leave two outside for him. So he'd be locking on here and then he'd be there. So we could block every one of them. And if the fourth man came for that back, he would block him. So that, was a, that is the protection that we would use in a situation where, number one, if we were thinking a blitz was coming and we felt like, hey, if the blitz comes, we can throw, we can max it up, stick a head on everybody and run the, run the post one-on-one -on -one to, you know, it was Vanover, who's now in the Canadian League, and it's been Ronald Lewis, it's been a bunch of different guys that had the, the great speed for us to go ahead and run that one-on-one -on -one situation. 
And we knew, and, all, and the, the read for the QB was simple. You know, he would just key that free safety. If on the snap the ball, that free safety, you know, got level and started uh, looking like he was going to read that tight end, playing man-to-man, -man, then he knew, he knew he could go over the top with the post. And we just went from a seven-step drop. Okay? Now, if on the snap of the ball that free safety drove on out of there, you know, he knew it was a zone. I didn't want him to throw the post into the zone coverage. And then we would work some kind of a, if they were playing zone, then he was probably dropping into a three deep from this pre-snap look. So he would get out and he would be able to run his, his our corner routes turn into kind of a deep comeback versus three deep. So we'd have a good high low working on this flat player right here. So we'd had a good, we had a good zone play. Versus zone, we had a high-low on the weak side. Versus all-out blitz, we stuck a hat on it, and we had a chance to score a touchdown. So, you know, your eight-man protection, you know, your, your advantages, you know, the positives on that thing, on the eight-man protections, is you, you can block it all. And I think you got to let them know that. You can block them all. All right. But now, you also can, uh, another advantage, you can, you can hold the ball. You know, long, longer than a three-step. And that's important to us because we see a ton, you know, a lot of people, when they bring the heat, what are those DBs, what are the coaches telling the DBs? They're saying, hey, man, we're bringing the heat. You don't have to cover him long they're probably going to audible to a three-step game or they're going to pick up and throw a quick slant or a quick out or, or a quick fade on you. So you can play just a little bit tighter and you don't, have, you don't have to cover them quite as long when we're bringing the house. But if they bring the house and we stick a hat on all you got to do, and that's another thing too, you don't really got to block them to death either. I mean, you worry about, well, can I hold them out long enough? If you stick your hat in the middle of every guy, you just don't whiff a guy. We tell, our, you know, we tell some of our kids, just, just get run over slow. That's all you got to do. Stick your hat in the middle of them, get run over slowly. If you get run over slowly, the QB's going to hit a seven step. He's hitching and cutting it loose right now because he knows the safeties are up. He knows he's got one on one. And he's got the entire football field. When this guy playing man over here and this guy's sitting there hanging for the tight end, you got the whole field. You know, if you just get inside that DB, here's the DB, here's the receiver, throw that ball across the field and let him go get it. Throw it away from the defender. If the DB doesn't let you get inside, well, it just you, you should be able to tell whether he's getting over the top or not. If this is the DB and you're running the post, he won't let you inside, then throw it up over his outside so your, your man can fade away to the ball. And that's all we would, we would work on that all the time, throwing the post versus man coverage. Do you get inside with no safety help? Throw that sucker across the field. If you can't get inside, you'll be, still be running like this, but throw it to where your receiver can, can fade off and go get the ball, throw it more up the field, away from the defender. We, we worked on that a lot, we had a lot of big plays. All right, some of the negatives. All right, you know, it just, it limits, you know, uh, limits your, your stretch. I mean, you call, if you call in the huddle a maximum protection, especially from the, the gap scheme, you're going to lose him for sure. You're going to lose him for sure. And because uh, we just, we never had him on any kind of a route. We're just sitting in there helping out if we needed it. You won't lose him necessarily. You'll, you'll get three guys out, but you, know, you won't stretch the field like you might want to stretch the field. If it's a down and distance where you don't know if they're going to blitz or not, you know, you start calling max protections every time. Unless you just grade it, you know, throwing a curl, and a flat or a, or a corner and a flat. I mean, if you can play that two-man game all day, that's super. And, uh, but after a while, it, 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 re it wears a little bit thin on what, you, what you're able to do. All right, here's another, another negative that I felt like. You know, who's attacking who? We were... Um, after when you, the more you max protect, if that's your scheme, if your thoughts are protect, 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 then that means everybody's checking before they they leave. That means uh, 
that you may lose two of your potential receivers. That means that, you know, that more than likely the defense knows that if, that's your, if your only philosophy is to protect, when they blitz, they'll blitz. If I got Warwick Dunn, who's a great back, and they know if I bring that Sam linebacker who's got no business covering him, but they know if they blitz him, that that back will have to block him, what are they going to do? They're going to blitz him in a passing situation. Because they'd rather blitz and make, that, make the back block him, which is a mismatch for us, than to play zone and let all these guys get out there and, and play ball. They know if they bring heat, you'll, you'll block them. A lot of teams will just choose that. They'll say, you know, they can't just throw one-on-one -on -one all day long. You know, they, they've got to be perfect. Okay? So, you know, a lot of times they start attacking you. Plus, when they're attacking you in the passing game, they're also, most, people, most defenses blitz for the running game anyway. They're going to blitz your running game and, not, and know that you're not going to free release anybody and they're going to be safe doing that uh, versus run and pass. So that, it doesn't give them that much to think about. It doesn't force them to cover every one of your five receivers that you have. Another negative, like I was saying, like I just alluded to a second ago, was uh, you get a you get a slow release. You get a slow release, especially like in your man protections. Even though they're going to release if they don't blitz, what do they got to do? They got to check. Every guy's got to check before he goes. That tied in slow release and seeing what's going on with the with the strong safety. The the weak back has got to check the fourth man weak before he can release. So. When you've got a play like we like, we like to run. I mean, our backs are big into stretching the defense for us. If we're trying to stretch a flat player, we might be in this set, but we'll, we'll get back. We'll get into a little bit more of this. Some deal like this, and that guy's job is to stretch this flat player. Well, if he's got to check and then release, he's not going to stretch anything. If he checks, farts around, and this guy's jumping up and down, making him nervous and all that kind of stuff, he stands in here, and then the, the rush gets up here, and he can't get out. He has to go under it half the time, and he's trying to... He's about here when you want him out here. All right, so now what does that guy do? There's no stretch on him. He can sit there and hold off the curl, and if you throw to him, he can still come up and make the play. You want him out here and him in here and this guy having to play both. So, you know, there's disadvantages. Now, if that team is a zone team and they line up five yards back and, uh, and they don't even make it look like they're going to blitz, it's pretty simple for that back to see that, you know, the blitz isn't coming and he can release pretty quickly. But teams, they start walking in and out. They start, you know, your back's not sure. Is he coming? Is he not? You know, they'll take a step at you and then drop in a zone because they know you're checking just to slow you from stretching the defense. So, you know, that's one of the negatives is you're going to get a slow release from those guys. So the only time that we like to use an eight-man protection or a maximum protection is if we, if we really feel like we can audible to it because a team has is, is shown a blitz and they don't bluff, bluff you out of it, or if you think you got a good shot at a blitz and if it comes, you can throw the one-on-one. -on -one. If it doesn't, you still got a pretty good two-man route on the backside. So those are the times we like to use it. We don't, we don't try to just wear it out. Okay, seven-man protection. And I'll just show you how we do it. All right, eight-man eight protection is simple on your quarterback. You might not have a quarterback. That's the brightest guy in the world. The, the less men you keep in to protect, the smarter your quarterback has got to be and the more talented he's got to be. And probably the more talented your skill kids ought to be. All right? So if you get into an eight-man protection, it's pretty simple for the QB. If there's no safety help, throw the bomb. That's about how easy it is for us. All right? If there's, some sa if there's a safety back there, don't throw the bomb. Throw your high-low on the weak side. That's all we do. It's, it's real easy for the quarterback. You got a freshman quarterback, that's about the first thing he really can start to learn about reading, reading defenses. And, um, and that's a real simple one for him to do. All right, seven man protection. I'll just draw it in this form. But 
There's really two ways we do it. Um, I'll show it out of the 340, well, I'll show it out of drop back. Now, it, we don't always, have, we'll run our seven man protection, that means he can release. That means he'll release and these guys are still checking. These two backs are still checking, but he can go ahead and release. We got our seven man schemes on. Now we can leave him here and because he can free release, we'll also put him here. A lot of times, We'll put a wide receiver in the game. Number 88 for us was Kez McCorvey. He caught about 74 passes. He got, he was still the Y receiver for us. He's the Z and he's the X and I'll go over that a little bit tonight when we talk about the shotgun. And then we'll, we'll be in the shotgun now at Florida State. And then he'll, he'll just take this tight end out of the game and we'll put the wide receiver in and now we can be in a seven man protection. We can't be in an eight man protection because he's gone, that's obvious. We can still be in a seven or a six man protection if we want to, but uh, predominantly we'll be in a seven man protection. So now you get your eight man front up in here again. The reason why I draw them out in a flex is because the more you flex your formation, the, the more you'll be able to define certain things for your quarterback. In the other blitz, when the tight end was here and the strong safety and the rover, they're going to bring all eight or they're going to bring two of them, two from either side. That free safety had to cover the tight end. Well, that free safety, he can disguise a heck of a lot better if the tight end is just sitting there next to the tackle. But if you move that tight end way out here and they're bringing this type of a blitz, then that free safety has got to do what? One of two things. He's either going to be out of position to cover this hot out here, or he's got to get his butt over there. But what does that do for your quarterback? It starts to define where the, where the heat's coming from. If he sees that free safety start cheating over there, he's thinking there's a good shot that your blitz is coming, and he'll be better prepared to, to see it happening. This kid will start learning, hey, when that free safety walks over the top of me, there's a good chance he's coming. I might have to do what? Some kind of side adjustment, okay? So seven-man protection just in this particular look is very similar to what I was calling gold. All right, on gold we had the same rules as you, I had before. They had their on rule, but they, they basically had their tandem right here, here, here. Guards on the tackle, tackles right there, on not there outside, that's his man. The back, before in this look, the back had the Sam, right? And in this look, who had him? The tight end had him, right? Well, he can't block him anymore because he's out there now. All right? So now you got your back, you know, trying to block two. All right, all of a sudden that QB knows, okay, I got a seven-man protection on. I know in this look I'm going to take care of everything weak for you, quarterback. You don't have to worry about that. They could bring all four just like we did in gold. They could bring all four and we can block all four with our one, two, three, four right there. We can handle that. Now we got one, two, three here to handle one, two, three, four. He's locked, he's locked. You got one guy to block two, all right? So what does that mean to the quarterback and to the receiver who's flexed out? The tight end was responsible for him when he was in there blocking in gold. But now in, in what we call 60 protection, he's still responsible for him, but he's not responsible for him to block him. He's responsible that if he does come, he's got to do some kind of side adjustment if it's not already built into, into the route. Okay, so the quarterback, he'll walk to the line of scrimmage and you'll see us all the time. He'll, he'll come out there and he knows we're in 60 protection. He'll just walk right over there and he'll point to the guy. That, that's, that's the guy. If he comes, folks, why in particular, you have got the sight read, all right? Now sometimes we would do it, well, I'll show you, I'll show you a different look in just a second so I don't muddy it up, but, but that, that is his man. He is responsible for that blitz. If that blitz comes, his basic rule is if he's got a flat route, he stays hot in the flat. All right, if, his, if, he would, if we'd have had a curl flat play and he's already in the flat, then he's hot in the flat. He doesn't change his route. If his uh, route from scrimmage was going to be a quick drag or some kind of a shallow cross and the blitz came, he'd still, that's a built in hot. If he sees the blitz coming and he is running a quick slant, boom, he can look for the ball or a quick drag 
or if he's out in the flat right now, boom, he knows to look for the ball right now. That's no problem. But what if we had the dip route call where he goes 10, 10 yards, makes a big stick move and comes across? He, he didn't have time for that. So anything vertical, we just put him on a, usually a stop sometimes on a quick slant. It just depends on what we want to do that week. But that is a true side adjustment. A side adjustment to us is when a receiver changes his original route because there's a blitzer that we can't account for. All right? There's a blitzer that we know we can't block if, if both come. Now, my, my freshman quarterback, I'll just say, hey, if he comes, you throw hot. Simple as that. If he comes, you throw hot to him. You know, high school quarterback, that's all you want to do. With Charlie, he knew, he knew both had to come. He knew if they just brought him and him, that this back would see that that guy wasn't coming and he'd come over and block him. He knew that he could still block the six-man blitz and even though he's blitzing that safety maybe here, he still may be able to throw the post on the dip route that I drew up a while ago. You know, he understands that two got to come in that look to, to truly be hot. But this guy doesn't know. He, well, I'm not going to ask him to see if the Sam and the strong safety come. I'm just going to ask him to see if that strong safety comes, then you run your hot route adjustment here. Or you're looking for the ball quickly, boom, in the flat or on the drag. So you got to know that. And that's what your seven man that's what our seven man protection does for us. All right, in that same type of a, in that same vein. I'll put the tight in here. You know, we can still we can still release do a seven man protection with the tight end in here. We might have whatever route on it. Might be uh, you, know, you can just still put the dip in there or whatever. Now they might give you a little different look, some kind of a uh, fifty look or eagle week look. Okay, again, in a seven-man protection, the quarterback knows you can block the seven on the time before here. The QB knew that the, the QB knew the seven we were going to block was right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If all seven of those come, they're blocked. It, with an inverted, the rule that I give the quarterback is you've got to find the most dangerous. Most dangerous perimeter. Uh, I'm just killing it, huh? That's, that's not how you're supposed to do that. Most dangerous perimeter blitzer. All right. So in an inverted look, who's the, and really all that is, who's the nearest perimeter player to the line of scrimmage? In that look, it's a strong safety. In a three deep look, you got the corners back, the safety back, and an inverted safety. He's the most dangerous perimeter blitzer. So in our scheme, we know we can block these seven, and then that's the most dangerous perimeter blitzer. And then that's, that's the guy that we've got to throw hot off of, OK? And that's what the quarterback knows. Now, in, the, in this other look, now you got a hard corner here. Strong safety is way out of there now. Just your classic two deep look. Well, if you're on the hash, and this is the field out here, who's the most dangerous perimeter blitzer here? Your weak corner, right? You got to look for Charlie Blitz. That's, that's how simple it is to tell the quarterback what to do in, in this seven-man protection. All right, so now we got an eagle. When we have an eagle on the weak, bat, on the weak side, guard's got his on rule, so he's on. He's got an on rule. He's got an on rule. Okay, there's no more tandem. When he's uncovered, they double to here. But now that's not happening anymore, so now the back has got to take the eagle backer. All right. He's got an on rule. Uh, he's got his on rule, and now right here we do one of two things. If we're solid on the, we're not, well, this is a TO, just a turnout protection. So when we have a turnout on one side, then we'll be solid on this side. So we'll be solid, solid, and that back will be responsible for him right there. Okay? So we can block these seven right here, but if he comes and he comes, because he will double read on the backside. 
then the court, then the, we know we can't block both the Mike and the Charlie. So now who's got to know, what should the quarterback do when he comes to the line of scrimmage? Identify who? Most dangerous perimeter blitzer. It's not the strong safety inverted anymore. It's the corner standing over there. So he'll point to the corner, and then that receiver now has a responsibility. When I point out there, son, if that Charlie comes, it means if Charlie Blitz comes, you've got to adjust your route to whatever it might be. So if they bring a Charlie Blitz, well, who's going to cover this guy now? More than likely the free safety is. You know, he'll start cheating. There's all kinds of little keys you, that quarterback can see that this might be coming. But if he blitzes, you know, our basic thing is a, a stop, you know, or a quick out. That is our side adjustment, breaking off, breaking the route short to get what you want. Now, you might have seen that Charlie Blitz coming and audible to a stop route. You know, that's what we used to do. All right, we see that Charlie Blitz, we'll audible to the three-step game and we'll hit the stop. Well, if we do it this way, if they bluff you, you run your route. If they don't bluff you, then you, you really side adjust them to what you're going to audible to anyway. So, you, you know, you take some of the guesswork out of it. And I tell you what, if nothing else, when we started going to this system, when I went to Florida State in 1985, the year before, all they did was the two things I said. They saw a blitz, they audible to the quick game, or they'd max protect and throw some kind of a post a corner route that I just talked about. So they got bluffed to death, and quarterbacks, were, you know, they're always unsure of what was going on. A defense could jer jerk your chain all day long showing blitz and get you to check out of something, and they start dictating to you, again, what you're going to do. Now, in this scheme, all you do, you just sit there and wait. You're just, you're very calm. The QB knows the, la the last thing he looks at before he comes off the line is the corner in a two-deep look and the strong safety in a three-deep look. So if it's an inverted safety, as he's calling for the ball, on his first step, boom, he just looks at him. If he comes, he knows he's two, three, bam, hit your side adjustment or whatever it might be. Or if the, the most dangerous blitzer is the corner, he's looking at him. On the first step, he sees him. All right, here comes the blitz. Two, three, bang, and hit, hit the side adjustment, whatever it might be. So now the quarterback's confident. They can, they can bluff us all they want. It doesn't do anything to us. They're not going to make us nervous. It doesn't, the kids know that if, if it comes, we'll sight read. If, they, if it doesn't, we'll drop back and play ball. And uh, it was a really, it, if nothing else, um, it did a couple things. You know, when people blitz you, they're looking to sack and gain momentum. If your quarterback does what he's supposed to do and he sees on that first step, here comes a strong safety, all right, he's going to go one, two, three, boom. He's going to throw the ball in rhythm. So it worked. you're not going to get a sag. They're not going to get a 10-yard loss and all that momentum. More than likely, you're going to hit that receiver in a one-on-one -on -one situation and get the yardage you need. So, you know, the only negatives, one of the negatives on that is they can force you to side adjust on a third and 10 or something like that. But, you know, a lot of our adjustments, um, you know, a quick slant in that case is one of your better adjustments. Because even if you catch a slant and fall down, you're usually going to gain, you know, eight, nine, ten yards on that. If, you get, if you're third and more than, you know, eight, then you're probably, I mean, chances of you making it anywhere aren't very good. But, you know, that might be a time if you know they're a heavy blitz team on third and long, which they usually aren't because they don't want to give up the big play. But if they are, then you might max up and, and go for the home run and try to teach them a lesson, at least scare the heck out of them. Yes? Okay, when we're in the gun, when we're, we don't do that, we don't do that anymore. We won't sight read, uh, well, well, we'll sight read uh, with the Y and the flat. He's basically Charlie like this, and we don't run three step, we don't run three step from the gun. We don't run our 80 game from the gun, but we do our side adjustments. Most of the time, he's still three steps. Charlie likes to be, he has plenty of time on a perimeter blitzer to take three steps and throw his, his hot. He, he may shorten it up and quicken it up. It won't be as normal, you know, three to get depth and set in the pocket, but it'll be a quick three for rhythm and, and cut the ball loose. I mean, there's been times where, now if that, if that blitzer who is unaccounted for is standing right there, with his butt in the air and runs a 4-5 and here he comes, you know, Charlie may just catch it, take a step and, and rip the ball to his hot out there. But m most every time he could take three steps from the gun. Under center, you have to take at least three steps because the line is, they're thinking five, seven step protection. 
and they don't know there's a blitz. They don't know there's a side adjustment about to happen. So you can't, your QB can't just pick up the ball and throw the ball because they're giving a little bit of ground on your five and seven step protection. It's coming at you. Okay. I'm going, uh, I'll go into the next one. But just advantage, just some of your advantages or your positives of seven man protection is it, it, does, it blocks most of the blitzes. Blocks most blitzes. Guarantees you three out. At least three guys are getting out. The two, the two outside receivers and your, and your wide receiver in a, in a split back scheme. Some people seven man protect. The one back teams will keep the tight end in and the one back, that's their seven man protection. I don't like that as much because the tight end is not as good a pass blocker as, there, as those linemen. They're on the line of scrimmage having to deal with all the twists and all that crap where a fullback is off the line and he can sort everything out and, and do a lot better job of putting his you know, nose right in the middle of a, of a blitzer. And uh, you know, they can check and they can release. So you get at least three out. You could get, and, and you could get five out. That's, that's the advantage of seven man. You get a, a possibility of five out if those backs check, don't get a blitz, and they release. All right, another positive, which I didn't talk in depth about, was we get big on big. We get big on big in our protection. Look at the 50 scheme again. No, we well sometimes we'll run we'll run the dip route with the eight man protection. We'll run the dip route with the se seven man protection. In the uh, in the huddle, we'll just call it in the huddle. We'll call gold dip. That's our eight man protection. We'll call 60 dip. Both backs are checking. We'll call 460 dip. 400 says that's now free release in the back. So in 60, we're releasing him, and these guys check. 400, we're releasing, free releasing both of those guys. Now we're into our six-man protection, which I'll go into next. But yeah, we can run gold dip, 60 dip, 470 dip. We can, depending on the team and how, how we like our hot situations against that particular team. Sometimes who's playing here, you know? So anyway, if we, against teams that we feel like we just outman them with our Z and our X receiver, you know, we may be more apt to just block them all and run one-on-one -on -one with the outside guys. But usually th those teams are, they know they're, they're not matched up as well at the corners against our receivers and they're a lot less likely to blitz. So if they're not going to blitz, then what would you rather, you'd rather be free releasing people, you know, so there's a, a fine line there. But talking, just talking about big on big and how we do it, Instead of just making this a solid, 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 you block him, you block him. Well, if you do that, if you have that kind of a scheme, that's a sound scheme. But in a 50 look, if your strong safety is inverted here in their normal four-man rush, three deep, four under zone, right? More than likely, he's going to be the flat player. He's dropping, he's dropping, he's curled flat. So he's probably the rush guy. All right, well, in, this, in that scheme, wherever he's just solid across the board, you're going to lose this back. So you don't really get your big on big. You got him blocking on, not there inside, him on, not there inside. They're triple teaming the nose. You're blocking him, but he's probably releasing, so he'll get out. That's good. But now, this guy's the most likely guy to rush, and you usually get a team running a four-eye and a five technique. You probably see that. You probably see the nose shaded a little bit on the weak side. Some teams, they don't do it. They just line up, head up, head up, head up. But in the perimeter, you know if they're inverted here, he's the rush guy and he's the drop guy. If he's the rush guy, there's no one to play the weak flat. So just if they're in a four-man rush, we're trying to get big on big. So we'll start out and say, okay, we'll start out and say, we are just going to fan this look right here. We're going to fan here, put the back he again here to the perimeter. All right, so what that does for us 
is it says, okay, if this guy's the most likely to rush, then we'll go ahead and get our big men on their big men, and we'll put our back on the least likely to blitz, blitz which is the Sam. Of the Sam and the Ed, he's le least likely to come. All right? So when he drops, he can release. So we get five out, we get that guy out there. The, this is the tight end already out, the Z out, and the X already out. Now over here, when we see this 50 looking, you got a five technique and a nose working there. Well, then you, you're putting him on the guy who's most, more than likely the drop player. Of the Ed and the Willie in an inverted strong look, he's probably the drop guy. He's probably the flat player. So he'll check him and he goes out there and that guy releases so you get him out. And you also want to help your center where he needs the help the most. Well, if he's, whether he's head up or he's in the shade, that, that's the gap he's going to when you rush here. Because they still got their gap control. They may not blitz those gaps, but that's their gap control. Sam's there, Mike's there, he's got that gap, he's in that gap, he's there, and he's there. So because he's there, you'd like him to have his help from the split side, which he does. He's uncovered. If he drops, then we're getting a pretty good double team on the nose, so you're helping your center. That's exactly what you want. Now that's our base rule, unless in a 50 look, excuse me, might be a five technique or it might be head up. Might be head up or a shade strong. Might be head up the inside. Uh, this guy's probably sitting here. Now your perimeter looks a little more like this. More of an umbrella look. Now your most your most your highest potential blitz is here, and so he is. If he's sitting there, he's your flat player in the two deep. He's your flat player, so you're not going to have two guys playing the flat. And because this strong safety is not playing the curl, he's probably your drop guy. He's in a five. He's your contain. He's working that way now. He's there. He's there. And he's probably your drop in a four-man rush again. So in order to get big on big, we got to change our thinking. If we do the same thing here, then the back would end up blocking him. This guy would end up helping here, but the nose is away. This guy would be fanning out here. He'd be blocking nobody because he's dropping. You don't want that, okay? So all we would do is make an opposite call. And the quarterback made that call and looked like that. Or that's if everybody was lined up, head up, and the, and the center and the guard couldn't figure out what was going on. But if this nose lined up in a strong shade, figuring we're going to get that, then the center just made a call solid. So all they did is said, okay, solid. Now we're going to be solid on the front side. He's going to block the Sam if he comes. If not, he helps him where he gets the help. So he drops, we're good. He's on rule. He's on the edge, but the edge is a drop player in this look. This guy, when it's solid over here, then it means turn out over here. So now we get big on the big. We get the big man on the big man, and we get the back on the least likely to come, which is the Mike in this case, between the Mike and the Willie. So he'll check him and he'll release. So that's how we get big on big in our seven-man protection. And it works out real well for us. Well, he does in that in the look where you got a zero on the center and, and head-ups on your tackles. Or if you don't want to mess with it, don't mess with it. The worst thing that'll happen is your tailback blocks the will in, you know, and your fullback releases. You, he may not be that big of a deal. Your weak back may not be that big of a deal. But if that guy's Lawrence Taylor or some pretty bad dude out there, you'll know like some teams, it's as simple as this. You come to the line, number 90 is the rush in in the 50 scheme, and number 80 is the drop in. Well, if you see number 90 over there, then we want to be turning out over there and solid over here. If we see the rusher is over there, then we want to be big on big over there and solid over here. Put your back on the guy who's the drop in is basically all we're, all we're doing. It may be as simple as that. Or it may be as simple as the nose guard if, he sh if he's head up to the weak side, we know we're solid over there on the weak side. But if that guy lines up right there in that uh, strong gap, then the, then the center may call solid, which solids it up. Put your back on the end, who's probably your drop guy. That means they're probably, you know, Russian four man this side. You'll turn out your big men on your big men and put your back on the inside linebacker. So that's how we'll protect. Those are the positives. Again, your negatives, it's, it's, it's one of our best protections. We use it a ton. One of our negatives is you just you end up, uh, again, you get a slow release. They check, and then they release. And, and as much as we use our backs 
in our schemes. You know, a lot of times we need them out there. If you're just running a curl flat and your, your Y receiver is the flat and your Z is the curl, well, you're going to stretch it with the Y because he's free releasing in a seven man and your curl is good. So you against three deep, you're in good shape. If that back has to check and then run a little circle route or something, you're okay. But if you're asking a back to be your free release guy and to be your stretch guy, you better, you know, think about free releasing the guy if you can't get out there fast enough. And that's, you know, getting into the next deal, which is a six-man protection. Now, there's other things you can do against the blitz, but I'm just going over our protect, drop back protections. You can sprint out. You can uh, run certain screens that are tremendous against the blitz. There's some running plays that are tremendous against the blitz. So, okay, we'll go. I'm, I can't believe I'm out of time already, but we'll go, I'll go another. I'll, I'll get through this six-man protection and then take any questions as we go. We also have a little five-man protection where we're just going to release everybody. Now, six-man protection means you're now going to, you got your five here. It's, it's your basic one-back protection. Some people do it under center with the back here, and he can, he can block in either direction that you want. Or, you know, we do it from the gun. We put our quarterback here. We put our back here. We already know in the seven-man protection, we can get our X and Z out. Those guys are always out. We know in the seven-man protection, we can flex him out and get him out in a free release. And now if we want to put our back here in a free release, or take, we'll take him out of the ball game, and I'll talk about all our personnel groups tonight. We'll take that back out of the game. We'll put another receiver in the game. We call him our Ted. Can't even remember why. but. Now he's, you know, he's, he's a free release guy. He's a free release guy. So now, this kid right here, that QB, he doesn't have to be real bright in eight-man protection. Seven-man protection is a little bit more complicated, but it's not, it's not that hard, and none of it's that hard. It just depends on how much time you got to practice it and what kind of kids you got and all that. But now he better be a little bit brighter when you're getting into a six-man protection, because now he's got a possibility of a hot on either side. Okay, and he's got to understand where the heat's coming from. Now you can get, you can six-man protect with the tight end in here and the back in here, okay? You can do that, but I don't like to do that much because again, if you're in tight, the free safety can be standing right here and he can cover him, and he can cover him pretty good without having to show any of his intentions. But if you put this guy way out here, and you put this guy way out here, now he's got to cover a lot of ground from here all the way to here. It'd be tough for them to bring some kind of a blitz with the safety having to be responsible for either the Y or the Ted and them not show it coming. And I always like to show this eight man because I think you guys see a lot of it. I know in our state, you know, that's, that's the biggest defense they see. And we see a, we don't see as much of it versus our full wides because they're, they're afraid of us just throwing a curl flat. All, you know, a, a curl and a flat and a curl and a flat over there, you know, we'll eat people up uh, if they've just got a, a flat player trying to play two on either side. So we don't see a lot of this look. But we do, we do see some of it. But I, and I like to use it as an illustration point to show that, hey, if they want to blitz this and this, well, somebody's got to cover this guy, and it's going to be the free safety. He's got to get over there. He's got to show it happening. If they want to bring a four-man week, which a lot of people love to bring, well, that free safety better get his butt over here to cover him. Somebody's got to cover that guy. Now, if he's standing here or you're in the eye, it's even worse than the eye. They can bring a blitz, a four-man blitz there or a four-man blitz there, and the quarterback doesn't even know because the safety can stand right in the middle and cover the tight end, who's not very far away, and cover the eye back, certainly, from where he's standing. So there's no... They can, they can deceive you all they want. They can show zone and have a blitz. They can show blitz and play zone. But if they got a blitz on, where, for example, they're going to bring these two guys here, buddy, they better have somebody here because we're pretty good at you know, seeing it and throwing our hot routes. They've got to get somebody in position to cover him. So when this guy stands over here, the QB knows, hey, the blitz is coming from over here. It's simple. All right? If the free safety's standing over here, you're not going to get a blitz, these, these two coming here, because somebody's got to cover him. He's got to stay, okay? 
So now, in our protection here, basically, you know, the back is just like it was before. He's got the double reed there. When we had the back here, you know, we were here, right? That tandem there, and that back was responsible for him. Well, now he's gone. He's standing over here. He's still responsible for that blitz. That blitz comes, we've got some kind of a hot to this guy right here. If this blitz comes, we've still got some kind of a hot over there. You could be hot on either side. You're saying, Coach, how can you put a QB in a position to be hot on both sides? You're crazy. All right, and that's what I thought until I learned a little bit more about this thing. When you stretch this thing out, when you stretch your formation, your QB is going to know where the heat's coming from. If he's standing here, you know, hey, Charlie, you know that you know that guy ain't coming. You know, you know that you know they you know they could bring him and we'll block him. But you know we can block these inside six, right, Charlie? Right, Coach. If he comes, he's got him. If he comes, he's these two got those two, right? We can block those six, but we can't block two here or two there. Well, they can't bring two here if there's no one back there to cover him. If he's standing over here, then you're okay. If he's standing over here, then you better be watching for your hot on the weak side. I mean, excuse me, you better be watching for your, your hot on the strong side. And that's how simple it is. If the guy's standing deep center, we always have him, you know, look for the weak side hot. We always look for the hot opposite the back, you know. But still, you know, it could come from either way. And, you know, once the kid gets used to doing it, I mean, he's going to see. I mean, if they blitz from that far away, half the time they're not going to get there anyway. If they're covering the guy up and blitz, if they don't even, if they don't start to show it a little bit, it's going to be obvious to the QB that the heat's not the heat's not coming. And if it is coming, he's kind of probably going to be there too late anyway. Because most everything we do is what would be five steps under center or three steps from the gun. We rarely go what would be a seven-step drop under center or a five-step from the gun. We do some, but not a ton of it. So even even if he comes from a distance, I can throw a 10-yard curl route before that guy gets there, that's, that's not a problem for us. But if he's on the line showing it, well then the QB knows where, it's hot, where his hot is and he's able to go to that. I'm already about five or 10 minutes overtime. Um, now, we'll, all, we'll, we'll move our back either side and he can protect, if the back's over here, well then, then the center works over there type thing, you know? And that's how we're gonna handle that deal. We do have a five-man protection, we're just gonna free release him. We free release him, then you know you're hot all over the dang place. But you know, you get a guy like Warwick Dunn, and we talked to the Buffalo Bills about this. They had Thurman Thomas there in their one back set. They knew that if people knew if they blitzed him, well Thurman had to block. They'd rather have Thurman block than try to cover his butt. You know, so now you know you start releasing him, and they got to start covering him. You know, it's as simple as that. Some people would play a man free but just blitz him or, or start to run at him, and if he blocked, he kept coming. If he released, you know, he came on it, but they would try to bluff us out of releasing the back, so we had to start just free releasing the guy and, and keeping people from keeping a guy like Warren Dunn in the backfield blocking all day long. Uh, I didn't really get to everything. I was going to go over five-man protections and a couple screens and sprint outs, but it happened in a hurry. If I'll, I'll stick around here, and I'm here tonight, too. I'm not leaving until real early tomorrow morning. I got some at 8.45 just talking about the shotgun, and you were seeing just touches of how we split everybody out uh, right there. But I'll talk about shotgun, and uh, if anybody has any more protection questions, I'll stay here as long as anybody wants. I guess it's dinner break now, so uh, I'll stick around for anybody who wants to ask anything. Thank you.